The Needle, written by Rambling Writer, published on the 19th of October, 2019. Chapter 2, Following the Fred Before Derry knew it, four days had passed and the would-be adventurers were sitting in the bar one last time, surrounding a map. They were all packed for 20 days travel and camping, all bundled up in thick winter clothes, all with their own accoutrements for their own roles on the trip. They'd all showed up right on time. Daring had a good feeling about this. She was already glad she hired Windrose. Reading a map was a skill all of them had, but Windrose was picking up on little ins and outs that even Daring had missed. Windrose was laying out their current route to Needle Vale with an almost lazy ease. Honestly, we barely even need to do anything for the first few hours, she said. Just follow this road. She traced a dotted line away from Light's Edge. And it will take us to a few miles south of the eye. Philanda snorted. <laughs> Why would they name the route to Needle Vale the eye? She half mumbled. Too easy, bunch of predictable wusses. Then you might not want to go to the Crystal Empire anytime soon, Stalwart said. They name their things after crystals and gemstones like you wouldn't believe. Assuming they don't just take a perfectly ordinary everyday thing and slap crystal in front of it. Crystal ponies, crystal palace, crystal heart, crystal fair, crystal princess, and Cadence isn't even a crystal pony. Why is that anyway? Seems tribalist to me. You'd really think the Crystal Ponies ought to have one of their own for a princess, and instead they get- What about this path here? Asked Grangefera, interrupting Stalwart's rambling. She tapped another line that took a considerably more direct route from Light's Edge to the pass. It's a lot shorter. It's shorter, but it's not faster, said Windrose. Look. She traced the line across the map slowly. It crosses contour lines like crazy. We'd have to scale five or six cliffs. It's really just an old road that was built by some reindeer warlord in the past and now used by adrenaline junkie mountaineers. It's not even paved. Trust me, there's nothing out there. Right. Rangifero glanced at Daring and shrugged. And once we get to the Needle Vale, well... Windrow's eyes flicked at the vaguely defined space northeast of Light's Edge. The detail in the map dropped off, leaving a space so sketchy, Daring thought it should probably just be replaced with a text box saying Terra Incognita. We'll see. Daring leaned forward and examined Windrose's path more closely. It looked easy enough. A straight-ish, level-ish road that swung by the eye on its way to another town, forced there by cliffs. At least her expedition would start with minimal fuss. All right, last chance. Any objections? No? Then let's get going. Setting off always sounded far more epic than it looked. Purple up the prose all you want, describe the scenery and implications all you want, go into great detail about each party member all you want, it really just boiled down to a group of people walking out of a town. And so, with the teeth of the mountains on their left, they walked out. Windrose in the lead, easily carrying a good chunk of the team's bags, a folded map stuffed down the neck of her fur coat. Daring, not far behind her, a few extra personal bags slung over her withers. Stalwart shield, walking with an easy pace, but eyes constantly flitting about, ready for danger. Falenda, hauling her own climbing gear and other similar equipment. And Rangifera brought up the back, a spear bumping at her side and a few sparks dancing along her antlers. The slopes weren't too bad around Light's Edge and the road gently meandered across them. It needed some maintenance. Thin, scraggly grass was poking up through the cracks between the cobblestone and every now and then Daring felt a stone shift beneath her hoof. But it was clean, and the heating enchantments to melt the snow in it were still strong enough that Daring could feel them through her furs if she concentrated. It was hardly any traffic, which suited Daring and the others just fine, thank you. Even the weather seemed still, so Daring thanked the fates for an easy start. Everybody walked along, in mostly silence, the 
we don't have anything to talk about, so why bother kind that didn't need to be filled. Every now and then, when Droz would announce that they'd gone so and so miles and only had this and that many to go, nobody objected, so daring let her keep it up. They were about halfway to the eye when Windrose slowed her pace enough for Daring to catch up. Windrose cleared her throat. Okay, um, Daring. I is it okay if I call you Daring? Daring nodded, and Windrose continued. Well, it's... I'm not really in any position to be making criticisms like this, but... She swallowed. Just... what do you think you'll find? Dunno. Isn't it exciting? Daring grinned. There aren't many things that are this unknown anymore. Whenever we find whatever is in the needle, we'll be the first people ever to see it. So... Windrose hit some bags further up her back. We don't even have a plan beyond go in there and blunder about. Plans fall apart too easily. This is more flexible. I... Windrose rubbed her head with a hoof. Look, Needleville is something... Nobody really gets, yeah? And nobody has learned anything about it, even though they've tried. But you, you're going to walk in and bumble about until you find something. She sounded quiet, like she was trying to avoid giving offense. Daring wasn't offended in the slightest. Bumbling about until you find something is the real name for what's euphemistically called research, said Daring. Just think about Velcro. It wasn't invented by some gal going, I'm going to invent Velcro. It was invented by some gal going, So, why do burrs stick to my coat like this? No, I don't think we'll walk in there, dig around, and quickly find some magical artifact or whatever that's the cause for the storms. But we have to start somewhere. Well... Windrose wiggled her ears. Okay, but I just think... Let me ask you something. Do you think something's up with Needle Vale? Yes, but... No buts, said Daring, putting as much snap into her voice as she could without actually snapping the word. Yes or no? Windrose grimaced a little. Yes. So do I. Do you have any idea what that something is? No, but no. Neither do I. The only difference is that I'm trying to do something about it. I'll get a better idea of the next step once we're inside Needle Vale. After a moment, Windrose nodded. Okay. But her voice didn't sound all that convinced. She fell back a little more. Privately, Daring hoped that whatever concerns Windrose might have, she'd keep them to herself. The last thing they needed was a negative ninny bringing everyone down. And if Windrose's varied skills were even average, she'd be almost indispensable. The hoofbeats of someone picking up their pace sounded. Daring heard voices behind her and swiveled her ears to catch them. Listen, my concerned comrade, said Renjifera. Don't argue with Daring. It's not a good idea. Yeah, yeah, I know don't argue with the boss, but I don't think- I don't mean in the she hired you and can fire you sense. I mean in the her concern isn't your sense. Why do you care whether she wins or loses? You get paid either way. Heck, you already got paid. Stop sweating. I don't think she wants you talking like that. Talk however you want. Daring hollered over her shoulder. I'm a realist. I know most of you guys are just working with me for the money. Excuse me, I'm not. Said Stalwart, trotting up to Daring's side. I actually do want to see what's inside Needle Vale, actually. It's just, uh, um, a thing, you know? One of the great ineffable mysteries of the world. And we are about to F it so hard, it won't know it hit it. Why are you all looking at me like- The pin dropped. Stalwart somehow managed to turn even redder and tucked her hood down as everybody else failed to hold in their snickers. Once Daring had her voice under control again, she said to Windrose, Okay, so she's not. But I don't care if you don't care, so long as you do your job. She took a few more steps and asked, Speaking of your job, how accurate of a map can you make during camp? Um, reasonably accurate, if the weather's good. It can't be super precise, not without more specialized tools and more time. Even I'm not that good. But if you're just looking for a general idea sort of map, I can manage that. 
A general idea map was just what I was thinking of. We'll be in the middle of a snowstorm, so I couldn't really ask for anything more. You'd think at least one of the groups that went into the needle would have made a map. Mused Ranger Fair. Wanna know a secret? Windrow said. Map making is kind of a crappy job if you don't love it. Especially this far north. She chuckled. You're out in the wilderness a lot, but you barely get to appreciate its beauty because you're too busy finding out how far this mountain peak is from that one. You need to lug around a lot of equipment all the time, and it doesn't even pay all that much. Why do you think I need the money? No, I'm not surprised nobody else made maps. So why do you do it? Windrose's voice turned dreamy. Because on the good days, it's amazing. You do get to appreciate the beauty of the wilderness once you're done mapping it. You get to go places nobody's gone before. You get to know the land like the back of your hoof, really. She waved the hoof at Ranger Fair. If you blindfolded me, I practically could cross Equestria by memory. I've been dang near everywhere. Wow, nice. And contrary to her expectations, Daring didn't hear any sarcasm in Ranger Fair's voice. You didn't work yourself out of a job or something, did you, my far-roaming frontiers mare? Chart everything that could be charted? I wish. Windrow said with a snort. No, it's a long, complicated, and boring story involving freelancing, family problems, and the stock market. My life's not really that interesting. Until we get to the needle, we've got time. Daring said encouragingly. We could use- No, trust me, it's boring. Unless fiscal analysis is your idea of a good time. Daring assumed gauging the value of the latest artifacts she'd recovered didn't qualify as a fiscal analysis, so she said, Not really, no. The group walked in silence for several moments. You're awful quiet back there, Philanda! Stalwart yelled. I don't think you've said a word yet on this trip. Philanda shrugged. I'm not a talky person. Fair enough. I never really had that problem, you know. I like to talk. Sometimes it seems like words just... They're leaping straight out of my mouth, and I can't control them, or which direction they're going. I was never really cut out for guard duty back when I was in the guard. I'd always try to make conversation with passers-by and tourists, which is a bit of a no-no. This one time, it was at a Grand Galloping Gala, oh, 11 years back, I think it was, and... The miles slowly rolled by. The sun's rise slowed. The slope slowly got deeper, the trees were gnarled. The wind that whipped down from the peaks wormed its way into Daring's clothes for her coat to scrabble at her skin. Whatever good atmosphere that had hung around from Light's edge had long since dissipated into the sharp chill. Daring realized she was tugging her wings close to herself. Not far ahead, the increasingly grassy road jinked to the left, then curved long and slow to the right. Daring looked up the mountains to her left. Somewhere, Beyond those peaks was a mystery that needed to be solved, and they just needed to find a way. She sensed it more than saw it, a skill born of countless years of pathfinding. A path through the forest, visible only as a strip where trees refused to grow, three or four ponies wide. It shot off northerly, perpendicular to the main road, and climbed the mountain slopes. Daring slowed her pace and pointed. There, she said to her followers. Do you see it? Yup, said Rangifera, coming to a halt next to Daring. Think that's our way into Needlevale? Probably. Winrose, could you check the map? Sure. Give me just a sec. Windrose pulled a map from her furs and rubbed her chin as she looked at it. Boom. She tapped a point on a map. Boom. She pointed at a mountain peak to the southeast. Boom, boom. She repeated the process with another peak, this time due south. Boom, boom. Grinning, she pointed at the faint, faint glow that marked the Crystal Empire far to the southwest. Perfect. Needlevale is due north, everybody. Follow that path. Daring almost flew, literally, down it, but she couldn't leave the others behind. She almost sprinted down it, but the snow was too deep for that. 
Rangifera and Falende took point, their antlers shimmering as they wove a spell to melt the worst of the snow. A literal path to the unknown, eh? Chuckle Stalwart. Things couldn't be much easier for us, right? Although, I suppose they'll get much, much, much harder once we're in that snowstorm. Maybe it's supposed to balance out somehow. Personally, I'd prefer to have the harder parts be first, so... Daring Toon Stalwart out and glanced at Windrose. To her surprise, Windrose was looking over her shoulder, staring thoughtfully at their footprints as she walked. She turned to Daring and whispered, So, if few ponies, people, go to Needlevale, who or what made this path? This isn't natural. She traced a path up and down, a mostly straight line, and kept frowning. The first thing that came to Daring's mind was that it didn't matter. But it only took a little bit of thought for her to realize that, yes, it did matter, it mattered a lot. Because if she was going to uncover whatever general weirdness was going on in Needle Vale, she needed to know the specific weirdnesses and how they fit together. I'm not sure, she admitted. Let's ask the mages. Her own experience with magic, barring the usual Pegasus stuff, generally boiled down to how long artifacts could retain their magic and befuddlement at how many powerful enchantments had been lost since those artifacts had been made. She nudged Stalwart, jolting her out of her automatic speech fuge. Stalwart, you know magic, right? Know of any natural magic that could have made something like this? Well, um... Stalwart looked up and down a path. Ley lines would be the obvious culprit, she said. But they're usually more obvious. They cause landmarks like the Crystal Mountains, and, uh... She swept a hoof around them at the towering cliffs. And even then, they cause plants to grow, not die. She lowered her head so far that the tip of her horn was beneath the surface of the snow and cast a few spells. I can't feel any magic that'll cause us to drop dead mid-stride, if that's what you're wondering. Well, I don't think I can. Earth magic's always been probably my weakest point. I wonder if it's because I'm a unicorn, but... Daring and Windrose exchanged glances as Stalwart kept talking. Daring shrugged, but Windrose's frown deepened. Rangifera! Falende! She yelled. Rangifera looked back, her antlers still glowing, but... Falenda just made a vague affirmative grunt. Either of you know a thing about magic creating paths like this? Rangifera tilted her head for a moment and said, Nope, sorry. Falenda, however, suddenly had her head up and a few minuscule stars flew into the forest as her concentration faltered. She bit her lips and said, Stalwart, can you take over for me for a second? Stalwart picked up her pace and thought she was between the two reindeer. More than a second, she said. Her horn started glowing, and the snow in front of her started melting, just like Rangifera and Falenda's. I can do it as long as you like. We really should switch off, you know. It'll keep us from tiring ourselves. Yeah, yeah, shut up. Falenda mumbled as she dropped back. Once Daring and Windrose had caught up with her, she said, I don't know anything for certain, but there's some legendary mumbo-jumbo about this. Old legends. The kind of parents tell to naughty fonts to get them to go to bed. Daring folded her ears back, although she kept her voice level. And you didn't think to tell us this because? Because it has nothing to do with Needle Vale or weird weather, you idiot! Said Falenda flatly. It's about things like strange patterns in the forest, animals behaving weirdly, that sort of thing. If you hadn't brought this pat up... She stopped, sucked in a breath through her nose, and started again. There are stories, she said. Old stories of a town of reindeer dedicated to studying magic hundreds of years ago. They dove into magic too deeply and it overtook and twisted them. They became these immortal things. Like alicorns? asked Windrose. Don't interrupt me, snapped Falenda. Windrose twitched and fell back a little. After a glare... Falenda continued. But no, from what I've heard, your pretty pony princesses are. Their bodies are different, but their minds are the same. With these, dear, it was the other way around. Their bodies were the same, 
but their minds, it was like they shuddered or something. They just stopped caring about, about anything besides themselves. They were flighty, capricious, and just off, you know? They became known as the Alvar. Daring nodded, cataloging the information away for later. While she was eager to hear what the heck this had to do with the path, any little shred of mythology could help them unravel the story of Needlevale. Now, since they were almost sociopathic scumbags, they were very self-centered. There's a story, Belinda stopped and frowned to herself. Long story short, their queen had an entire forest burnt down because the walking around was too much work, and somehow that rippled through the magic of the earth now. Big plants just refuse to grow where the Alvar like to walk, for fear of obstructing them and getting destroyed in retaliation. That's why you can find weirdly clean natural paths in the forest where clearings come from. The Alvar gather in those places so plants stay out of their way. And it leads to things like... Falenda gestured up and down the path. This. In those stories, the Alvar walk here. And they walk here often. Oh. Windrose looked behind her and shrank an inch, licking her lips. Hmm. Darien wasn't sure what to make of the story. Simply discounting it out of hoof was the pinnacle of stupidity. She done that regarding the legend of Nightmare Moon and, well... But something about it simply didn't click. Like it had been transplanted from somewhere. Reindeer just weren't as magically inclined as unicorns, as far as she knew, and the idea of a group banding together and going nuts for magic simply didn't gel with her. Not the way most other facts turns to legends she'd run into the past had. Not the way the idea that something was a needle veil did. Still, that hardly meant that it was impossible. She decided she'd grill Falenda on them some more next time they came across something out of place, like this path. Personally, I don't believe it, said Falenda quickly. It's full of holes and just unlikely, you know. I'd say this path was made by people going up and down to see Needle Vale, naturally beating it down over and over and over, obviously. Awful lot of people to come out this way for nothing, muttered Windrose. They lapsed into an uncomfortable silence, thankfully broken up in a few minutes when they reached the bottom of a low cliff, maybe 40 feet tall. Some not-too-difficult hauling pulled them and their gear up to the top, where they collectively agreed to have lunch. Cutting into the mountains was a narrow cleft, maybe 7 feet wide and winding enough to be all but invisible from the road. That looks a lot wider on the map said Windrose through a mouthful of cheese. Like, two or three times as wide, but I guess if no one comes here, why map it? She shrugged. We're lucky there's a pass at all, said Stalwart. Can you imagine coming all this way only to have to climb over all the mountains ourselves? She laughed. That put a bit of a damper on the whole expedition, at least for me. It'll be hard enough once we actually get inside and have to deal with the storms. So to have to climb big, stinking mountains like these before we even get there? Can you imagine? That'd be so... Rindrafera leaned close to Daring and whispered, I forgot to ask, my likable leader. We're staying tonight in the Needle, right? Back in Light's Edge, Windrow said it'll only take an hour at most to get through there. She nodded at the pass. Assuming it's clear, and I don't want to spend hours sitting on a ledge above the Needle waiting for nightfall. I was planning on going in as far as we could manage while it's still light, said Daring. She squinted slightly at Renjifera. That's not a problem, is it? Oh, no, Renjifera said with a chuckle. Just thinking ahead, I didn't come on this trip because it was easy. No, ma'am. When they'd eaten, they set off down the cleft with Windrose taking the lead. It was wide enough that they didn't have to, but they wound up going single file. The whining nature of the canyon amplified sounds again and again. The few times the group spoke, they had to keep their voices at almost a whisper to avoid deafening themselves. Channeled by the stone, winds whipped through the gap in both directions and lashed at their clothes. Daring looked up. The walls on either side of them were sheer, almost 
flat and the wind whipping through it meant even a pegasus would have trouble climbing them safely. The cleft was so deep that the wall seemed to lean inward and compress the sky into a twisting scar. Barely any snow fell into the gap, but that didn't stop it from being very, very cold. Colder than the road, certainly. Like they were walking down the gullet of a frost dragon. The dragon breathed again, harder than before, and Daring slammed a hoof to the top of her hood to keep it from being blown down. Suddenly, she stopped, her ears straight up. She swiveled them to the left, to the right. Does anyone else hear that? She asked. The others stopped and listened. A quiet, high-pitched wailing rolled through the cleft, getting straight to their bones. Wind's picking up, Falinda said quickly. Not long now. I'd give us ten minutes at the most, whispered Windrose. Let's, let's keep walking. One minute later, the amount of snow that made it down began to increase. Three minutes later, it was an inch deep and the wind was battering at their eyes. Five minutes later, Daring had passed around goggles for protection and everyone had their mouths covered with scarves or balaclavas. Seven minutes later, the cleft began widening. Seven minutes and five seconds later, the full brunt of the weather hit them like a sledgehammer. Clamping her wings tightly through her sides and shielding her face with a leg, Daring pushed away through the cleft and the intense winds. Maybe, once she got out of the funnel... After one of the longer minutes in her life, the wind slackened even if it was only a relative term. Rather than battering her like river rapids, it felt like she was standing in a ford, being assailed, but able to withstand it without too much effort. She took a breath. The cold didn't stab at her throat quite so hard. She lowered her leg and took a look. It was partially concealed by the haze of snow in the air, but it was undeniable. A long, thin valley lay before her, stretching out into the distance like a corridor. Its walls were steep and pointed as palisades, hemming them in and ready to skewer the unwary. The trees were sparse, barren, as effective shelter as a cocktail umbrella. Strange pillars of stone loomed out of the miasma like ghost chips in a fog. It was hostile. It was unforgiving. And it was exactly what Daring wanted. Ponies and gentle deer, she said, grinning. Welcome to Needle Vale. End of Chapter 2 Featuring Cloudy the Leopard as Daring Do, Felicia Wang as Windrose, Nadira Jihan as Falende, Notorious Dogfight as Rangifera, Quinch as the narrator, and Rainbow Star as Stalwart Shield. <laughs>